G'day, guys and gal. There are about a dozen very compelling arguments about why there doesn't need to be female space friends or custodies. The main two are the Sisters of Battle and the Sisters of Silence. Females already have their own badass super soldiers in the setting. Not everything needs both gender roles filled in it. If anything, it's the guys who should be jealous that the Sisters of Silence are confined to the female role because of how awesome they are. But I'm getting sidetracked. On paper, the Sisters of Silence seem like the perfect women, unshakably loyal, fit, and doesn't speak. But the reality is there are no perfect women out there, hence there is a catch. The catch being that none of the Sisters of Silence have any souls, and even the action of thinking about them or being remotely near them causes you pain and discomfort. If you're a psyker, then you are going to have a terrible time whenever a Sister of Silence is around you. Unless you're the Big E, because he's the Emperor and rules don't apply to him. Before we get started, you know how a couple weeks ago we launched Journeys Through Faladon, a book written by me and 40 other authors that draws inspiration from Warhammer fantasy and classic adventure novels. Well, the reviews are in and you guys loved it, so we're giving away a hard copy version of it. All you gotta do to enter in for your chance to win is click the giveaway link below and choose one of the methods to enter. All entry methods are free. In the meantime, if you guys want to check out Journeys Through Faladon, then you can always get the digital version or the paperback version off Amazon. Today we're going to talk about who the Sisters of Silence are and where they come from. We'll also discuss their abilities and what makes them so unique. Let's get into it. The Emperor and his scientifically gifted, unloyal hose created a lot of things. The Custodes, Primarchs and Space Marines were all made through their supreme gene craft. The Sisters of Silence, however, were not. Their unique gifts come from a gene called the Phara gene, which more or less means that not only do they have no soul, but the spot where their soul was supposed to be was more or less a black hole that drained other people's souls, setting them a level above others who were just considered to be psychic blanks. Only in Warhammer could soulless warriors be considered the good guys. As such, it's hard to determine their true origins. Did mankind evolve this gene as a defense against the warp? Did a Xeno have a bit too much fun playing with DNA? Or did the Emperor plant the seeds of their creation thousands of years ago? It's not known, nor does it really matter. We do know, however, when and why the official sisterhood was formed under the Imperium. Psychers were a problem from day one. You would have these Harry Potter wannabes accidentally opening portals to hell on the daily, which just isn't what the Emperor needed. Hence, a wing of the Imperium was created who would go out and find these psychers throughout the galaxy, then bring them back to Terra to either train them or neutralize them. If the psyker was being a pain in the ass from the get-go, then their goal was to just kill them. These psyker hunting squads were made up of trained Imperial psychers backed up by soldiers, and whilst they did a reasonably good job of it, the casualties were often way too high, as well as the Imperial psychers sometimes going crazy and opening portals to hell themselves. Not Idealio. Sending a Psyker to fight a Psyker is like sending a man armed with a knife to kill another man armed with a knife. Even if your knife man wins, he will probably still get cut. While the Imperium was wondering what the absolute bakery to do about this, a heavily populated hive world suddenly broke out into an insane uprising. Madness spread throughout the world and even the planetary governor had to be put down by his own bodyguard when he tried to kill his own kids. Space Marines were on the way, but they would not arrive soon enough. Then, something incredible happened. As all the positions were being overrun, one position not only stood, but actually drove the enemy back. It was the Death Corps of Kree! I'm kidding, I, I'm kidding, I wish it was. It was a group of female guardsmen from an obscure and now hidden planet called 9-13. Cool name, Games Workshop. You know, if I were naming a planet which housed the majority of badass soulless demon hunter chicks, I'd probably call it something like The Void or The Silent Scream or something edgy like that. Not 9-13, but each to their fucking own. As the madness was caused by a family of rogue psychers, a regiment that was not only immune to psyker powers but actually repelled them had a field day walking straight into the enemy base and killing the source of the problem. The Imperium was like, hell yeah and promptly recruited half of the planet of 913 into their service and begun training them. A few decades later, the Sisters of Silence were now a fully-fledged organization that made collecting psychers from across the galaxy way easier and helped put down countless renegade psychers. No longer would the Imperium send a knife man to kill another knife man, now they sent a chick with a gun to do it. Metaphorically, of course, the Sisters used large swords. Now, why are they silent? Seems pretty unhelpful to not be able to communicate with anyone out loud. I can't imagine doing hand signs while holding a two-handed sword would be easy. 
Yes, I'm aware that they use binary and other solutions, but and whatnot, but that's that's still inconvenient. The answer is unclear beyond because it's cool. However, there are some theories out there that I like. Firstly, due to the sisters' intense level of soullessness, they can see through warp-based illusions and tricks, something that the Emperor uses a lot of, so they could, in theory, see the Emperor's true form. In the lore, when a sister looked upon the Emperor on the Golden Throne, they did not see a mighty god, just a regular man writhing in pain. The Emperor probably didn't want anyone to know that his whole Emperor vibe was just a facade, hence having the sisters being silent would mean they couldn't leak that. Another theory is that the Emperor was sick of hearing girls chatting back to him, hence he chucked them on mute. Modern day sisters don't even know why they commit to the vow of silence, however they continue to honour the vow to show loyalty to the Emperor. This begs the next question, why are they so loyal to the Emperor? The custodies are built to be loyal to him, however the sisters are not. Well the answer is not having a soul generally means that nobody likes you. Even a custodies who works with, respects and even likes the sisters of silence still feels disgust when they're near them. So imagine a normal person, they downright hate them. After the Horus Heresy, the sisters were shunned and mostly disbanded by the Imperium because of this. So imagine you're a sister, and the only people who like you are the other sisters. Then suddenly this big, golden, sexy, oiled Emperor Man comes in, and gives you a cool base on the moon, introduces you to a bunch of other people like you, and then he trains you and gives you the gear to be a demon hunter. You would be pretty stoked with him as well. The idea was that the Custodes protected the Emperor from physical threats, whilst the sisters protected him from warp-based threats. As the warp wasn't a massive problem during the Great Crusade, the sisters weren't really active other than their usual psyker collecting slash slaying missions. This was until Magnus the Red did something very fucking wrong and tore a hole in mankind's only hope to permanently beat Chaos. He tore a hole in the Imperial Webway, which allowed an endless tide of demons to rush in and begin causing problems. For years, the Custodians and Sisters of Silence fought to hold the demonic armies back. They were outnumbered 1000 to 1, yet still held firm against the tide. Yet, even the Sisters and the Custodians have their limits, and they begun to lose. That was until the Emperor walked into the Webway, one shot the demon army, and then sat on his golden throne to sort it out, but without the Sisters and the Custodians, they would have fallen long ago. In response to Magnus's extreme fuck-up, the Space Wolves, backed up by the Custodes and Sisters, were sent to Prospero to arrest Magnus and bring him back to Terra for a good old-fashioned spanking. However, sending Lehman on a peaceful mission to arrest the brother that he hated is obviously highly retarded, hence the arrest turned into an invasion. Now, the Thousand Sons love the warp, and the Sisters of Silence do not, hence the invasion was pretty one-sided, as a Thousand Sun Sorcerer who can't cast spells isn't going to do so hot against the Custodian. The Thousand Sons' forces were broken, and Magnus himself got his back snapped, Bane-style, before he begged Titsnitch for salvation, and he teleported out of there. Not the result that the Big E wanted, but the Sisters did a swell job regardless. Now that the warp was an issue, the sisters fought and bled during the Siege of Terra, being instrumental in holding off the forces of Chaos until the Big E was able to clap Horus. Sadly, after the heresy, with the Big E gone as well as his best bro Malkador, the sisters no longer had someone to vouch for them. Even the High Lords who understood their importance didn't want them around, hence the order was reduced to a fraction of its size. A small group of them remaining on their lunar base while the rest scattered throughout the stars and took a back seat in the Imperium. Their role in the black ships was replaced by other less powerful blanks. Overall, not a good call by the High Lords. They would briefly re-emerge during the War of the Beasts and would be instrumental in defeating the Orc Wa. They nearly wiped out the Imperium. Whilst this did bring them back into the Imperium for a time, once the menace was dealt with, the same issue emerged, and the sisters once again mostly disbanded. A small force of them were kept on the moon and Terra as emergency defense force, while the rest broke into small squads that spread across the galaxy, continuing to fulfill the Emperor's will. Now there's something of a plot hole that people point out. The Emperor and Malkador loved the Sisters of Silence and treated them well. They often walked with them and fought alongside them. The Emperor and Malkador were also the two greatest psychers in the galaxy. In theory, hanging out with the Sisters of Silence should have been the equivalent of cock and ball torture for them. Even Magnus in his demon form really struggled to do much when they were around. The answer is that either the Emps and Malkador were so powerful that they overpowered the null powers of the Sisters, or they had simply engineered their own secret away around it. Whatever the case, they were more or less completely unaffected by them. Since the War of the Beasts ended, the Sisters have not been a thing at all in the Imperium until the return of Gilliman. 
When Gilliman arrived on the moon on his quest to go back to Terra to talk to Daddy, Magnus, the Red, followed him. Despite putting up a surprisingly good fight, Magnus was going to kill our big blue Aryan overlord. Until the emergency defense sisters that I mentioned arrived and even up the fight long enough for Magnus to get his ass kicked and banished back to the warp. Gilliman then immediately ordered the reformation of the Sisters of Silence and issued a galaxy-wide recoil of all sisters out there to return to Terra and rebuild. Interestingly enough, the sisters see the Emperor as a god and his Primarchs as angels, so they returned happily and the order was rebuilt. They would once again come in handy when Korn's demons randomly invaded Terra just as Gulliman spoke with the Emperor. His demons rained from the sky and thousands of them burnt up upon arrival when faced with a sister. Imagine that a psyker feels sick and depowered when near a sister, then imagine how a demon, a being purely made up of psychic energy would feel. Not good. Not good at all. The sisters teamed up with the Custodes once again and aided the Imperium in its goals. They slay entire Chaos cults without suffering a single scratch, banish entire demonic armies with only a handful of sisters, and assassinate Alpha level Orc Psychers. Cause that's a thing. With all these amazing feats, how powerful is a sister exactly? Are they only effective against warp entities? The answer is no, they are beasts, but not in the way you might think. Firstly, a sister of silence is a one in a trillion. For starters, you need a female blank who is a certain level of Faria before they can even be considered. Low level blanks are not eligible to join. Then, that potential candidate is put through the most hardcore trials, stuff that would make space marines blush, before they are whittled down so that the only the strongest remain. They are then trained to become insanely skilled warriors. The law doesn't detail if they receive augmentations, however I think it is safe to say yes they do. Sisters are described in lore and on tabletop as cutting through space marines in melee combat. I'm aware that they do have powerful gear, but powerful gear isn't enough to bring a normal female up to such a high standard that they can kill a superhuman Astartes with a sword. The augmentations they receive are subtle and more revolving around extending their youth, increasing their reflexes, speed and strength. Not so much their durability, as they can still get one shot by a space marine hit, if the space marine hits them in the right spot. Not all sisters are equal obviously. Some sisters have such a lack of soul that even looking at them is difficult for a custody to do. Other sisters are so great with a sword that they can match a custodies as well. After all, they are designed to be the female counterpart to the custodians. Just like how the sisters of battle are the female counterpart to space marines. They strike out in small elite kill squads, each with their own special name and colour scheme, meaning you can make your own homebrew sisters if you wanted to. One squadron stands out from the rest, the Knights of Oblivion, which are the best of the best. Once again, only in Warhammer can soulless warriors called the Knights of Oblivion be considered the good guys, or gals. Other than being just generally more awesome, the Knights of Oblivion aren't that super interesting. Kinda ties into the issue that whilst the Sisters of Silence are an awesome and interesting sub-faction, their individual members aren't cause, well you know, they don't fucking speak. They do have named characters, but naming a Sister of Silence is like naming a vegetable. It's pretty much the same thing. And that's us for today guys, the lore and story of the Sisters of Silence. The return of Gilliman is great because it also heralds the return of other things such as these girls. I'm doing a drunk livestream this Friday by the way. Last time I did one I ended up blacking out and I woke up in a puddle of my own vomit, so this one should be even better. Don't have the details ironed out, but just thought I'd mention it now. If you enjoyed the video, want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 gives you access to a boatload of Whammer Hentai, and $10 gives you access to the premium hentai calendar, which does feature Sisters of Silence in it. Also, remember to get into the competition for your chance to win your free hard top copy of Journeys to Faladon. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more soulless content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.